Hi, I'm Christine Martell and I'm an artist that lives in Hillsboro, Oregon. And I'm here today to help you make your own art studio from found objects. So here's my little outline of what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about what we wear, where we're gonna do it, what materials we might wanna look for, the tools you might wanna use, and how to put them together with fasteners. So, first thing, I always think about what I am wearing when I do art. I like to be comfortable and I don't wear my best clothes because sometimes when we do art, we get stuff on our clothes and it messes them up. The other thing I like to think about is like, if I have long sleeves is, do I wanna roll them up? Because I, you know, these things hang down and they get in your stuff. So I usually take my sleeves and I roll them up to get them out of the way. So there I go, and I'm all ready to think about making art. The second thing we wanna deal with is where you're gonna make art. I'm here in my art studio because I'm an artist, but not everybody has an art studio. So we wanna think about where we can work, where we won't be in the way, and we won't be ruining anything around us. So it depends on where you are, what you're gonna do. It might be that you have a desk or something like that. It might be that you have a table somewhere. You might be in your garage like I am, or you could even be outside and sitting on the ground. But you wanna think about what's underneath where you're working. Because once again, art makes a mess sometimes, so we don't wanna ruin anything that's around us. So here in my studio, I have a nice table under here. So I've taken a big piece of cardboard and I've put it underneath my stuff that I'm gonna work with. You might also use like an old sheet or an old towel. You could use newspaper or some old kind of paper, maybe even like paper that something came wrapped in that you're reusing. But basically what you wanna make sure is that you're not gonna mess up something that you don't mean to mess up. So, We've gone over what I'm wearing, see I'm comfortable, and I've got my sleeves rolled up, and then where I am, I'm on a table, and I have it covered with cardboard. Now, materials. We can make art out of absolutely anything. And so I just kind of went around my house, and especially in my recycle bin, and I found all sorts of cool things that we can use. So I'm just gonna show you a few things to give you some ideas. I have, first of all, I have plastic and I have like, you know, a yogurt container. I have something that nuts came in. I even have the cover for that in case I wanna put the cover back on. I've got, you know, something that some granola came in. I've got another one that some, um, some kind of fruit or vegetable came in this one. And then I've got one that looks like, it might be Q-tips and you know, it has both cardboard on it and plastic. I also have things like, I have medicine bottles. I've got some old beads, some like, um, you know, beads that you use like with Mardi Gras or Christmas, something like that. I've got some little containers that um, hummus came in. I don't know what these are, but found a pile of them, and I thought, whoo, those are kind of interesting. They have a really interesting shape. Who knows what we can do with that? Um, I also found a little container that have a bunch of like old beads and broken jewelry, and I thought, ooh, that can be good. I have an empty spool of thread. I've got some caps from different things. I've got some plastic rings. I thought those might be interesting. And I also, I just bought some plants. And so I have the plastic pot. And I thought, huh, that's cool. It has holes in the bottom. Might wanna stick something in them. That could be really interesting. So that's basically what I found that was plastic. Then I also went looking for some other materials because I don't know exactly what I'm doing yet. So I thought I'd get a range. And I started looking for things that were wooden. So with wooden things, I found this little stick. I don't know what it was, but I thought that could be cool. I've got one, the craft stick. These are little teeny ones, but you could have big ones too. And then I also found in my drawer, I found some um, takeout chopsticks. 
and some bamboo skewers that you use for the grill. There was also a broken um, puzzle that was, you know, made of wood, the different shapes, and I thought, oh, some of those pieces could be cool. So I put those in my pile. I also found some wooden beads. So these already have holes in them. So I thought, ooh, those could be fun. I keep dropping them. Um, so that was my wood. I also found some natural stuff. So I had some corks. These came from wine bottles. Thought those might be fun. I found some beans in the kitchen. So these are pinto beans, but any kind of beans could be interesting. Um, you could use black beans or garbanzos or whatever you have. I also cracked some nuts and I have some shells from some nuts. I thought those were fun. Um, I went outside and I found some rocks and I found some different sizes. I found some bigger, you know, medium ones and then some little teeny ones. So I got some different sizes. And then I found these really interesting pods. And I'm not exactly sure what they're from. I think it might be sycamore or something like that, but I thought they were really interesting. And so I got a bunch of those. So you can find stuff inside your house and outside your house and all of it will work. Now, metal. Thought metal would be fun. So I found this metal can. It's hard to open, but it does open, it has a lid. I also found this kind of aluminum Thing. It must some kind of food must have come in this. This is an old box from Peppermint Bark that can work. I have some metal rings. I found some bobby pins in the bathroom. I also found some paper fasteners that were in my office. Found some screws in my garage. And I found some paper clips and some um, safety pins. So I thought that would make a nice thing. Now, I also found some tin cans. Here's the thing with tin cans. I want you to be really careful with this. Sometimes when tin cans get opened, it leaves little sharp points on the edge. So anytime you think about using a tin can, you need to make sure you're very careful with it and you might have to ask someone for help to fix these little points that happen like mine here has two different sharp points. So you wanna make sure that you fix those before you try to do anything. So I have a pair of pliers here. This is an easy way to do it. And I just am gonna smush it down. And you may need to have some help from an adult to do this, but you wanna make sure that um, you don't get cut by anything that you work with. So we make sure that this gets nice and safe before we do anything with it. So I got it so it's nice and smooth now so I can't cut them. The next section of stuff, I have just a few things, but I have some glass and these are like, I have some marbles, some little marbles, I have some bigger marbles and I've got some little pieces of decorative glass. It, I think these are used like in planters and things like that, but I've got a couple different ones. Thought those could be really interesting, they're very pretty. I have some what's called aseptic packages. These are the things that milk comes in or sometimes soup, sometimes juice. I've got two different sizes. They've got little plastic things at the top and I left them there for now because I don't know if I'm gonna use them. And then the last thing I have are all sorts of things made out of cardboard. So you might find an egg carton, you might find something like this is almost the very end of a tape roll. So, you know, there's probably not a whole lot to use here. I could use the last little bit up, but then when it's done, you can use these very cool um, cardboard rings because they're nice and strong. You can also use toilet paper rolls. These are made out of bamboo because I use bamboo in my house and these are really strong. Yours might not be quite as strong, but they're good things to uh, use because they're already in tubes. And then of course we have boxes. Um, so this is a box that came from some pasta and it has a hole in it, which I thought was kind of cool. And then we have lots and lots and lots of cardboard boxes. And so these are coming into our houses a lot these days. 
So you might want to take something like this and get it ready for your use. And the way that I would do this is I would probably peel all this stuff that's attached to it off. Like I'd take off this label and then I'd see if I could get these address labels off just because I don't really want them in my artwork. So sometimes it takes a little bit, but you can work at it and uh, get some of this stuff off so that you're um, your box is cleaner. So this is what you want to do to kind of collect your stuff together. Now, anytime that you're doing something like this and you're collecting materials, we want to be really sure that we don't leave them all over the place. So the other thing that I've done is that I have um, taken a, a box that is empty and I am now going to put all of this stuff in the box and I'm going to keep it together and so it doesn't get all over the place. So this is going to be my art material box and I will take stuff out only when I'm using it and the rest of the time it will be in the box. Mm -hmm. So I put all of my materials away for now. But what I want to say is when you're out looking for these materials, I'd also like you to keep your eyes open for these tools and fasteners that I'm going to show you next. Now, you don't need all of these at all. You might find just a couple of them, but a couple things you need to think about. One is, who do they belong to? So if you want to use a tool or a fastener, they might belong to someone else in your house or they might belong to a neighbor or something. You need to ask permission before you take any tools or fasteners. So you make sure, you know, that you're getting um, all the kind of, you know, asking and being polite and all those things that you do when, you, when somebody wants to borrow something from you. These are the things. Categories. First thing you might find is a stapler. Staplers come in all different sizes. I have two different kinds here. Um, these can be really helpful. The next thing you might find are hole punches. Now, hole punches look very different. Um, you might have seen these regular ones like this at school. Some of them have make big holes and some of them make little holes. So these are two different ones. These are kind of handy. If you somebody you know scrapbooks or does some paper art, then you might see some of these fancy ones too. So this is a um, bigger punch. And this one does different size holes depending on how you set it. And then this one does really deep things. So you can put a piece of paper, you can cut way in the middle of stuff with this. And it also makes um, different size holes depending how you set it. And it's very strong, it, it, it punches through cardboard and things like that. So you might possibly run into one of these and that's what this is made for, is making holes. The next thing you'll want to do is try to find scissors. Now scissors are all sorts of kinds too. If you have somebody in your house that sews, the most important thing to remember is never to use their sewing scissors for anything but fabric. That's really important. Sewing scissors don't cut paper ever and they certainly do not cut cardboard. So here's a couple you might see. These might be a pair of scissors that you have as a pair of kids safety scissors. This is a set, little set of snips that uh, open up differently than regular. You have to move the lever and then it, they snip back and forth like this. These are ones with jaggly teeth that make like a, a zigzaggy cut. So you might find some like this that do some fun edges. And then these are more like regular scissors, but this particular pair with a bump on it these are called multimedia scissors and these are really, really strong. So if you have found a pair of scissors like this, you need to be very, very careful and you need to make sure that you have permission and that you know how to use them safely. So those are the tools that I think could be really useful. Now let's talk about fasteners because when we're making art, especially from found objects, we want to be able to put things together. So these are the kinds of things that will help you do that. And once again, you don't need all of them, but these are the kinds of things that you can look for. The first section here, I have some elastics and I have different sizes of elastics. Some of them are big and some of them are really strong and some of them are smaller. And 
any size elastic can be really useful and you might want a bunch of different sizes. I also found a bunch of little string things, you know, this is, um, they're just like different pieces of little cording um, that I found around. Um, I also found this like fuzzy Cecil twine that you might see. Sometimes people like wrap packages and stuff with this. And then I also found some yarn. So if you have somebody that knits or crochets or something, they might have some little bits of yarn. Once again, make sure you don't take their, just randomly, you ask them for what is a, a little leftover piece because that's all you need. I also found some pipe cleaners or uh, chenille sticks, sometimes these are called. Um, they're fuzzy and they have a wire in them. Those can be good. I have another version that is, um, has plastic around it and it has a wire in the center. So this kind of, you can move it and it stays where you put it. I also found some bread ties, like these are from the top of a loaf of bread, you know, some twist ties. So these guys can be really helpful. You may find some of these in a drawer somewhere. I then found a bunch of things that, um, I guess these are probably used for keys. It's like an old key thing. Found a couple different kinds of those. I found a big key ring that has called a split ring. So this opens up and you can put stuff on it and it stays. I also found some chains that open up, little make little rings. So these can be used to fasten. I have some paper clips. So this is a really big paper clip. I had some littler ones when I had my materials. So paper clips can be used as fasteners and materials. So they can be really good. I also have these little, what are called binder clips. They come in all different sizes. This is a little teeny one, and then this is a really big one. And these are really handy because they can hold things together. They can hold things together for as part of your project, but they can also hold things together while you're trying to fasten other stuff. So you can use these guys as both a tool and a fastener. Oh yeah, here's a little paper clip right here, little one. Um, and then I also have things that are in the category of tape and glues. Now, everyone has different kinds of tape around and all of them are useful for different things. It's really helpful if you get more than one kind because some tape is better on paper and cardboard and some tape is better on plastic and metal. So the first one I have is scotch tape. Most people have this. It's not super, super strong, but it can be useful. Um, the big strong version of it that's similar is what's called packing tape. And then this is packing tape. This is a, in what's called a tape gun. So you might see it in one of these, but you might see it in a little teeny, a little dispenser too. But basically it's, it's clear plastic tape and it's really strong. So like, see, I can't, I can't tear it very well. Um, I usually have to cut it. So uh, this stuff is great. Um, you might also find what's called masking tape. It's usually like a beige color or a white color. It also comes in all sorts of colors. And I use that too, but that is good. Blue tape, this is usually used for painting. So you might see this, and this also comes in different widths. It comes in really wide and some comes in a narrower one. And then um, the tape that so many people love is called duct tape and it's either black like this one or sometimes it's shiny um, like a silver color. I also have some that has some designs on it so you might be able to find some of this around too. This is a really strong tape. This might live in the garage. Um, lots of people have this to use um, in repairing things around the house. Okay, so those are tapes. Glues. Lots of different kind of glue. Some work better for certain things and than others. So these are some of the things you might have around. This is old Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue is great for paper and cardboard and things like that. It takes a long time to dry, so it can be a little bit challenging if you're doing sculpture, but it's a good one, a standard. This is another kind, sometimes it looks different, so it's a different kind of bottle. It's just a different brand. So you might see it in something that looks slightly different. This is also a similar glue called tacky glue. Um, 
So, and it tells you about all these glues on the, um, on the bottle. It'll tell you if it's dissolvable with water or not. And I always like to, sit, to look for the glues that are dissolvable with water because it really helps in case you get it on something like your clothes or your surface, you can wipe it up and fix that. You also have the T classic glue stick. I know you've probably all seen these and used them a lot. Um, these are helpful mostly for paper, but they can be handy for a bunch of like decorative things that you're gonna possibly do. And then the last one is a glue gun. Now, this is another thing that is really important that you have permission to use it and that you know how to use it and you respect it. What this is, is it's a gun that um, has these glue sticks in it and it heats them up and the glue comes out this end all kind of gooey, but it's also very hot. So a couple things about glue guns. The first thing is you never ever touch the tip because you can burn yourself. When the glue comes out the end, you never touch that because it can burn your fingers. The other thing about a glue gun is this stick that goes in, goes in this way. You never pull out the stick this way because what happens is it breaks the mechanism that's inside and then the gun doesn't work anymore. So this needs to be plugged into a wall. You need to be very, very careful with it and you need to make sure that you have permission to use it. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you about setting up your studio. So you know what to wear, you know to find a place where you can work and that cover the surface. You looked at some of the materials that you might find. You can look in your recycle bin, you can look in junk drawers, you can look in the garage. We always ask for permission before we take anything. Same thing with tools and fasteners. You can look for the, some of the examples that I have. Some of yours might look really different. So just find what you can. The same thing happens with the tools and the fasteners. You make sure you keep them together in a box or something. You don't leave them all over the place. And you make sure that after you're finished with them, you return them to whoever they belong to. So I hope this is getting you excited. I hope you're gonna set up your art studio and then I will be back to give you some ideas about what you can do in your studio.